Okay, what I've done here is I've made two new current viewing shunts. These are, this obviously is my battery pack here. These current viewing shunts are two 0 0.033 ohm resistors in parallel or in series rather and I've checked the inductance and this is a very low inductance uh, situation that's why I have them opposite the way they are that's a quarter inch phono jack for more permanent hookups plug that in to the battery like that and then plug the supply to the Ainsley board in there now we're going through that shunt and I can take the fluke oscilloscope probe and just look uh, let's see, we'll hook the positive lead of the probe to the more positive side of the shunt and the ground on the other side now the fluke is uh, completely floating the inputs and their grounds are completely isolated so I can actually use the fluke to take a reading with respect to a different ground reference so here we have the A channel of the fluke plugged into the positive side of the battery here I have another identical current viewing shunt assembly oh I'm sorry it's not identical this one's brown and this one's white Ooh. but they both have uh, two 0 0.033 ohm resistors in series and they're hooked up plug that one into the negative battery terminal and we'll get the fluke and hook the probably to the more positive side which is going to be that one and the ground reference to the other side of the shunt there okay. and on the Ainsley board itself I've put in a little short circuit jumper here if I can get it out this is the quarter ohm Ainsley current viewing shunt but I've made a little jumper here that I can use to short circuit that. So that's not in the circuit anymore. It's short circuited. So the only current viewing shunts that we have are this one on the positive battery and this one on the negative side of the battery. And I'm displaying those two traces over here on the fluke. Uh, the B is the negative side of the battery which is the normal Ainsley point B and the A is the positive side of the battery which is where Mile High has been suggesting we move the current viewing shunt to. Now with most oscilloscopes you can't do this because these two channels of course have different ground references and if you try this on a scope that's not completely isolated that doesn't have isolated grounds you're gonna short circuit something short circuit your battery and maybe even blow your oscilloscope but the fluke can do this so now I'm going to go ahead and apply this signal. I think I am. Okay. So now we'll turn up the gate drive here. Like this. And I've, uh, and there's, uh, what I've done is I've actually, this, this signal up here is coming from pin 3 of the 555 timer. This is just a reference signal from the pulse generator. It's not actually doing anything in the circuit. But you can see some oscillations there. I'm going to turn the gate drive up and down. So I've arranged my 555 circuit here to produce some oscillations on top of the normal uh, peak where the MOSFET is actually on. So these are real uh, oscillations that are happening when the MOSFET is on. If I change the duty cycle you can see that they get kind of swallowed up in there. Okay. And those are in fact uh, reflected in the current traces. Now uh, A is on the positive battery, B is on the negative battery, and as you can see uh, the traces are substantially identical. And this is 
as we expect, because the current in a system like this should be the same uh, everywhere around it. Okay. Now there may be some slightly higher, or rather uh, more negative going peaks on the positive side, but I'm not sure yet, I'm changing the uh, voltage display here, I'm not sure yet whether those are, uh, whether the difference here between A and B on the magnitude of those negative going peaks, I'm not sure if that difference is caused by the scope itself or the probes or slight differences in my current viewing shunt. Uh, but regardless, I am getting just a hair more uh, magnitude of those negative going spikes. Uh, now, of course, this indicates a current reversal. Anytime that line is below the zero baseline, right, the current has reversed. So this actually indicates some current going back into the battery, back into the battery, in that downward going spike. Now it's a minuscule amount, but there are also some in these spikes here as well. And if I change MOSFETs to get the spikier MOSFET, the 2SK1548, uh, you can see that I get a whole lot more spikes. I'm going to change the voltage again. And the amplitude of those spikes is much greater. Okay, so if spikes are what floats your boat in this circuit, I really do recommend at least just trying the 2SK1548 MOSFET. Uh, you do get more, any, remember any time that spike is below the line, that indicates current flowing into the battery. This is out of the battery, this is into the battery. Okay. And uh, if you look at the voltage on the battery here, it says 28.3. That was about 26.9 when we started. Okay. So we're pumping fluffy charge into the battery uh, with all these uh, spikes here that are riding on top of the uh, 555 timer signal. So I'm, when I do that, I'm adjusting the, the gain a little bit. And you can see how those, those spikes, first they're not there, and then as I increase the gain, uh, they start coming in, and then they increase in magnitude. And the MOSFET likes those. Here I'm increasing the gain. There, they're starting to come out. And there they go. Okay. So those spikes below the line are indicating current flow back to the battery. The battery's indicated charge is going up. And uh, there you have it.